May peace and God's blessings and mercy be upon you. I would like to welcome all of our viewers, so welcome to a new episode of our program celebrating the best women on earth. Today's episode, God willing, is about the pious companion, who will always be remembered for her immortal legacy, who is held in the highest esteem for all Muslims, for she is the mother of the first man to build a mosque for prayer. She is the one who Habib al-Mustafa gave tidings of heaven to, when he said, Patience, Al Yasser, for your reward is paradise, the first martyr in Islam. And with that, I have no doubt that you have guessed who we'll be talking about today. Allow me to welcome my dear friend and mentor, Dr. Abla Al Kahlawi. Peace be upon you, my Peace dear. Peace be upon you and the mercy of God and His blessing. Welcome and welcome to our dear viewers who have tuned in to another episode. Who is our subject for today? About a woman who all women should feel pride and proud to be her sisters, about a woman who is the greatest of examples of heroism, about a woman who sacrificed the most precious thing a person has, and that is her life. All of this because she loved this religion and gave it her all. And she lived her life immersed in this religion until it became a part of her being. Even though her hopes and dreams were of an earthly nature, just as it's with every other girl and young woman who doesn't understand the truth. The truth in God's words being, I created the jinn and humankind only that they might worship me. The truth being that life is so short and that we will all return to our maker. The truth being that life is a fickle thing. And one never knows when he will meet his end and that our life is but a collection of days when one passes so does a part of us. Yes. This woman, who is Sumeya bin Tukhiyat, and there are accounts that actually gave her other names, such as Khibat and Shibat, but I believe this is the most accurate name since it's that of her father's occupation, Khiyat, which means tailor. This woman was the wife of a man of the Bani Makhzum. She was friendly and obedient, quiet and flexible, kind and loved by all. She was very generous with her time, helping those in need and serving those she could, and was also known for her sense of humor. She was absolutely a delight to have around. Let us go back to who it was who had married her, and that was a man known as Yasser ibn Amir ibn Malik al-Ansi and was originally from Yemen. He had traveled to Mecca in a trade caravan, and there he saw the Kaaba. He would look up at the heavens and then back at the Kaaba, feeling that there was a pull towards this place. And when he looked at the statues of the idols, he felt an estrangement. He felt that the Maker must be something much greater than this idol made out of wood or stone or everything else. This is not how things should be. He felt this attachment to the God of the Kaaba, and a feeling of safety and security. For God's words, who hath fed them against hunger and hath made them safe from fear. And so worship was inevitable. Safety from fear is a very big thing. That's why many nations need to feel safety. It is just absolutely essential for people to feel safe within their own country and nation. Police officers have a divine calling because they are the caliphs of God Almighty. Our protection. In ensuring our safety and our security. Who hath fed them against hunger and hath made them safe from fear. For the worst thing to befall someone is fear, as it's mentioned in the Quran. And surely we shall try you with something of fear and hunger, and loss of wealth and lives and crops. But give glad tidings to the steadfast. You see, the first trial is our fear. Something. Not all yes. of our fear. And fear is the opposite of peace and security. And when you think that the biggest trial we are facing right now is fear, fear before hunger as well. Because he who is fearful will not go out looking for his daily sustenance. He'll be afraid to go out. And he found this peace and security in the grounds of the Kaaba and he wished he could live there. And so he spoke with his business partner, who lived in Mecca, a good man who was happy to be associated with him, 
And when he saw how much he wanted to live in Mecca, he aided him. And to be honest, these were the characteristics of the Arabs. Chivalry, generosity, brotherhood, they were all prevalent behaviors amongst them. And we can say that Islam found people with good backgrounds to deal with. God also granted him his other wish. And he was married to a woman from Mecca. And he was married to this woman who we're calling the heroine of our episode today. A simple woman, but with all the virtues of a heroine. An honorable woman. Today's episode, yes. And so, they lived a happy life together, along with this woman. For she had completed the image of life. He imagined for himself a perfect life, and she completed it for him. He was living near the Kaaba, feeling a sense of security and peacefulness, and serenity, the source of which he wasn't sure of. God blessed him with a companion, a spiritual partner in the blessed Umayya. And they both yearned to have children, and being human will look ahead and wish, and they had wished their sons would be like the young men of Quraysh. For the young men of Quraysh were considered the greatest of the youth of all Arabs, for they had characteristics and traits not shared by anyone else. And in addition to that, God had blessed the people of that area with its security and wealth. For the image he had to be finally completed, he wished for children and for the boys to be like the young men of Quraysh. And God also made his dream come true. And he gave him two sons. We all know of Ammar. Yes, the blessed Ammar bin Yasser. And Abdullah. The boys had an excellent upbringing thanks to their parents. They insisted on raising them the best way possible. They became friends with the best of the young men of Quraysh. And even the elders of Quraysh could brag about these boys. They loved them and held them in esteem. Not looking down on them because they were not originally from there, but because they were able to earn the respect and love as well as the trust of the men, young men and the elders of Quraysh. It's not an easy thing, you know. Ammar ibn Yasir and the blessed Sumayya, and she is worthy of such a title, they were people of knowledge, those who knew inherently of God Almighty's existence and had relished in the sweet taste of faith. And this is how it happened. They would constantly visit with Abu Hudayf al-Makhzumi and with the others of Bani Makhzum and Bani al-Mughira. And there, they kept hearing the name Muhammad frequently mentioned. And the call or message peace of Al-Habib al-Mustafa, peace be upon him, was a popular topic of conversation mentioned in many ways. He was mocked and ridiculed. There was talk of what they were going to do to him. Skepticism over his claim of the existence of one God how dare he insult our gods, and so on and so forth. And so they got introduced to the issue through this chit-chat. But out of, as I like to say, God's grace, and out of curiosity, they both wanted to find out the truth behind this Muhammad. They all spoke of his prophet, peace be upon him, Al-Habib al-Mustafa. And so they decided to find out for themselves. And on a clear day, they went out for a walk, and they headed, to Dar al Arqam, to watch and listen from afar because they were still prescribing yes. to polytheism. And there they heard nothing of what they could have dreamed up. And he found that the rhythm of his breathing matched that of the verses being recited. And there he had found what he had lost. He saw his spirit soar with these verses being recited. And he understood that this loveliness was what he had been searching for all along. This is the thing I want. He realized why he had never been content in believing that a god could be these man-made idols. He began to relish the beauty of the Holy Qur'an, for in it one can find the ultimate meaning and the most beautiful images. He realized how beautiful the meaning behind the words was and what benefits there was to entering this divine religion. He looked at himself and to his children and his wife. He saw how this religion would grant them roles, and as it asked of them, it would give in return. 
he saw how it taught meaning and gave a brotherly love from him to those around him. He realized that life was not about being a wealthy merchant or a fine tradesman. For there is who is richer than... God is great. Yes, there is God Almighty. And wealth is not about having funds, but something altogether different. It is about our love for God. He began to bring his sons because he loved them and wanted that which is good for them. For there is no greater love than that a parent holds for a child. And they all began to learn at the hands of Al-Habib al-Mustafa, peace be upon him. And they became better people, more refined a thousandfold. They began to understand humility, beneficence, and commitment, and what it means to be truly generous, all of these values which are absent in the youth of Quraysh. It is true, they had values, but they did not quite measure in terms of this level of purity. It was far beyond them even. It couldn't be taught. Yes, my dear. With your permission, we'll take a pause at the Islam of the family and household of Al Yasser and the Islam of Sumayya, the heroine of today's episode. A short break and we will return, so stay tuned. Here we are, dear viewers, ready to continue with the tale of the first female martyr in Islam, the Blessed Sumayya, one of the best women on earth. Please go ahead, my dear. So the young men began living what they were learning. And to them, the words of God Almighty, there were young men who believed in their Lord, fit them perfectly. The sons of the Blessed Sumayya. Yes. As for her husband, these words of God Almighty best described him. Of the believers are men who are true to that which they covenanted with Allah. As for the effect of this new faith on her, one can only imagine the relief she felt. She felt a sense of dignity like never before. She felt a freedom and her humanity, for now she was a human blessed from the heavens, not indebted of it to anyone, for it was from God Almighty. It was as if the family had a brand new lease on life. And whenever they were together, their home was filled with words of faith, and their meeting was one of serenity and meditation. And at that point, Islam was still in its secret stage. Now during this period, Abu Hudayf al makhzumi passed away. This was the countryman, the ally and dear friend of Yasir, Yasir ibn Amr al-Amsi. Yes. And in that, they felt that their relationship that had tied them to the locals had ended. And they began to reject their actions, especially those who were rooted in pride and despotism. And they felt that the longer they spent around such people, the more they would be subjected to talk of opposing Muhammad and the religion that he was bringing and that they would not be able to stand it. And so they began to withdraw from the community, and amongst themselves they began to show increasing devotion, reciting the Qur'an and learning the rules one surpassing the other, and returning to the Prophet, peace be upon him, to learn more and more with great zeal, immersing themselves in their faith. Their lives had a complete paradigm. It shifted away from all the material things, as they understood the real meaning of wealth and that it is getting closer to God Almighty. That is all what they wished. And one day, one of those who spied for Quraysh, collecting the names of those who frequented Dar al-Arqam, saw them as a family. And he informed Al-Makhzum, and they did not believe it. So they called them to question them. And because the first thing that they had learned was honesty, they were honest. So when they asked them, have you lost your path? He did not answer. So he asked, have you entered into the religion of Muhammad? He answered him, yes. So he asked, have you renounced the religion of our forefathers? He answered him, yes and was steadfast even when he asked him, Do you know what is going to happen to you? He answered, Yes. So they moved on to his wife and asked her the same questions, and she answered the same way. Trying to bait her, he said, You only entered the religion of Muhammad because it was pretty. So she looked at him and said, I will not answer, but to say, I bear witness that there is no God but God, 
and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And the same went for both sons. They took them out into the desert and they dressed them with iron breastplates so that it would melt onto their bodies in the heat of the desert. It was almost like a vest, if you can imagine it. God spare It would scar them greatly. And in the afternoon sun, they tied them with rope. And they kept asking them to renounce until the pharaoh of Quraysh, Abu Jahl, came to them and asked, Did you denounce our gods? His reply was, I bear witness that there is no god but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And when he told him to recant, he refused. He told him he would kill him. And he said, a martyr in the name of Allah. And he killed him there on the this spot. This is the blessed Yasir, correct? And so it was Yasir who died. Next he came to Ammar, who thought of how he could better serve the call of Islam. I could be a soldier for the cause of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So when he was told to recant and renounce, he did. He said what he had to save his own skin. Not because he was scared, he had a higher calling, nor because he was afraid he would die like his father, he knew that he would be a martyr as well. But he knew that as a young man, he could better serve the call to Islam before he is martyred. We know that when we are in our youth, we are like a tree, bearing fruit, but once we grow old, the thing we can serve with is our wood. Dry wood that will not bear fruit, but will serve a purpose all the same. Indeed, he played a huge role. But he knew he had so much more left in him to give. Next, they came to Samaya, our heroine. But he had no respect for her age or her white hair, or show her mercy at the fact that she was a grandmother. He showed no mercy at all. Rather, he remained there, torturing her himself hitting her in the face, beating her body using a whip, rocks, everything he could find while she repeated, I bear witness that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. He hurt her in every imaginable way. And again, all she said was, I bear witness that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And so he pierced her stomach with a spear. And she died instantly. Her spirit rose to the heavens as the first female martyr in Islam. The Prophet, peace be upon, peace him, be upon him, when he passed them and the others along with Bilal ibn Rabah, he would see all of Al Yasir being tortured. He would say to them, Be patient, Al Yasir. Wow. Your reward is paradise. And we still repeat it till this day. Be patient, those of you who are enduring for the truth. Let them be patient. Those of you sacrificing your life for the sake of truth for your reward will be paradise. And so her blessed spirit ascended to heaven and it was welcomed there with great ceremony. As she was received by the angels of paradise, she left behind all that she had loved and all that her heart felt secure near and all that delighted her spirit. Her children for one, she left it all behind, reassured that it was her true calling. We all pray for a good end to our lives, to be accepted into heaven. Amen. And she could not have achieved a better one. Martyred for Allah. The very best of endings. There she would await Al-Habib Al-Mustafa, awaiting the promise of God. And that is paradise. But give glad tidings to the steadfast, who say, When a misfortune striketh them, we are Allah's, and unto him we are returning. Such are they on whom are blessings from their Lord and mercy. Such are the rightly guided. God spoke the truth. As for Al-Habib al-Mustafa, peace be upon him, he wept and grieved for the loss of Sumayya and her husband. And he besought God, saying, O oh God, have mercy on Al Yasir. O oh God, do not torture Al Yasir. And so she won the da'wah of Al Habib al Mustafa, peace be upon him, and was rewarded with paradise. How lovely. May God have mercy on the soul of this pious, the true, the martyr, and devoted Sumayya bin Tukhiyat. May God's mercy be upon her. In her story, there are many lessons to learn. 
But allow me, and I do not dare make a comparison, because it's not the same. But today, many girls and women do not wear the hijab or head cover, because her parents won't let her, or she's worried what people and her friends might say. Others worry about their husband's reaction, or worry what they will look like. Now I understand the difference in the two situations. Sumayya sacrificed her life saying there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger and was truly rewarded while these women are afraid to follow God's will. It is true, thou will not be able to guide everyone whom thou lovest, but God guides those whom he wills. We will find everything else futile. Pray for us, my dear. O oh God, grant us your guidance and give us serenity, Amen. piety, and wealth Amen. of spirit. O oh God, Amen. purify our hearts. O oh God, purify our hearts. Amen. O oh God, forgive us our trespasses Amen. and have mercy on us. O oh God, if you are to treat us justly, we shall need nothing else, nothing but your grace. Amen. Peace be upon him, my beloved, be the Prophet him. Muhammad. Peace be upon him. We thank you, dear viewers, and hope you will be tuned in for the next episode of The Best Women on Earth.